Good evening. This is Maestro Cretello with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today we have a 3v3 on Tartarus Harbor. Our first player today is the Killing Tree, playing as the Space Marine Apothecary. We've got a Legion of the Damned Apothecary right here. Apothecary is a healing commander, has a targeted heal, a passive health regeneration aura, can, can get an even better health regeneration aura if you use uh, if you get the arm of the Apothecarian. And you know what, these days he actually is a pretty good fighter, even though I've normally said that he's not such a great fighter. He's, he's getting better. Next up, we've got Deckard disappearing. Deckard Kane playing as the Force Commander. The Force Commander is a tanky melee hero. Starts out with a bolt pistol and chainsword. He's got a variety of other weapons. Mostly just runs and tanks and hits things. And, uh, yeah, that's mostly what he does. Next up, we've got Che, 1349. I think it's Che. Some people say Chell. Hard to tell whether that's an L or a 1. And I'd prefer to say Che instead of Chell. It sounds cooler. Um, he is playing as the Lord General. Also got one of those new Elite Custom schemes. I'm not, I don't remember which one this is. But the Lord General is the only hero who is a squad. He has a Stormtrooper retinue that can reinforce out on the field. And he, uh has a lot of abilities that can buff his troops. Next up, on the other team, we've got Jimmy Russell's playing as a Tech Marine. Something about these yellow color schemes on the Tech Marine that seems funny. This is the Imperial Fist uh, custom scheme that's new in the recent version of Elite. Tech Marine is a ranged hero. Starts out that way. You can get an axe later on. He's really good at supporting vehicles as well as, well, armies, period. Uh, especially with relay beacons and turrets. Next up, we've got John Soul playing as the Inquisitor, also using one of the new Elite schemes. I forget which this one is as well, but I will learn it eventually. The Inquisitor is a spellcasting and disabling hero. She can also become a tanky melee hero with certain warriors. And finally, we've got another Lord General, this one played by Lino. He is... he's another Lord General. So then, looks like we've got Imperial Guard versus Imperial Guard in one lane. Uh, and actually, John Soul. Let's see, John Soul. I thought John Soul was in the middle. Yeah, because John Soul's in the middle, but it looks like we've got. Uh, he's committing over to the right lane, and Lino saying, of course, probably commenting on him getting doubled. Switching over to the grenade launcher on his Lord General, but he's going to bleed a lot. Uh, Letting the models on his Lord General die. Ooh, 25 requisition. I think that's been changed. I believe before the requisition cost to reinforce Lord General models. Sounds so weird. Um, it was 30 requisition. But that is kind of a lot of requisition for how good those those models aren't. Uh, those actual, those extra models that the Lord General has, they're not that powerful, although they do give him a lot of staying power. So, what you're really paying for is the staying power, since you can reinforce right out on the field. Sniper Scout's in the building, and one tactical marine model goes down for the Apothecary. I actually like to get snipers a lot against the Apothecary. It's one of the only, probably the only commander in the game where I will not feel guilty about go going double snipers against, uh, just because snipers are so powerful. But the Apothecary also just has so much capability to resist damage uh, with snipers. So anyway, Jimmy Russell's apparently with two snipers already. Well, wow, that's a lot of power investment early on. I'm surprised he managed to get that much power, but I guess we're already getting into the thick of this game since we do have some power expenditures that kind of are in line with that and make sense. We've got some Assault Marines at 50 power. Um, John Soul with some Catachan Devils as well as... Well, most of the cat gen devils has got a sentinel stomp. So we're seeing we're seeing power purchase anywhere between 40 and 70 from many of the players right now. Uh, che right here. I feel like somewhat surprisingly getting pushed back against Lino. If anything, I feel like Che should have the advantage because he actually has a sentinel. It's really surprising to see Lino not have a sentinel. But he does have a heavy weapon team, so that will prevent the guardsmen from doing a whole lot. Uh, also limits how far the sentinel can move. And the sentinel can't, so the sentinel can't really approach and Che doesn't have two Sentinels, so he's not going to overpower. Um, he's not really going to overpower the heavy weapon team the way he would if he had two Sentinels. Meanwhile, over here, we've got Sniper Scouts. Very, very compromised. And not such a good position for them. But the Inquisitor halts the approach of the Force Commander using the Hammer of the Witches. We've also got an Assault Marine j jump, which definitely scares off the uh, Scouts. But now they have to be really, really careful about these Catachan Devils being right here. 
Katachan Devils themselves are now in trouble. So is the Force Commander. They are. They attempted to force melee the Force Commander, but that was a purification rites knocking over the Katachan Devils. Katachan Devils actually now in a lot of trouble. Four out of eight models with 30 hit points now and three out of eight models. 22. Very, very close call for those Katachan Devils. Actually bled quite a few models off of them, which is pretty rare. Katachans usually don't bleed too many models. Now, this is interesting. The Apothecary... That's where Killing Tree's upgrades are. It's got a Sanguine Chainsword as well as Purification Rites. Sanguine Chainsword is not a very powerful weapon, so it doesn't really make um, the Apothecary much of a damage dealer, but it does make him a bit of a tank, since he will be restoring his health with each time he uses that Sanguine Chainsword, and he actually attacks pretty quickly with the Chainsword. Chainsword animation is one of the quicker melee attack animations. So, you, you definitely need a bit more damage against the Apothecary once he has this Sanguine Chainsword. Otherwise, he actually tanks a lot, uh, and then he's just very persistent, so he tends to stay in melee a lot, and whatever squad is getting tied up by the Apothecary probably isn't going to be doing any shooting anytime soon. Uh, and Purification Rites, we've already seen some action from the Purification Rites doing weapon knockback, in, uh, basically right around whatever squad gets healed. Very good as a melee counter, especially good in combination with Assault Marines, uh, whenever they jump in, when their health gets low, and if, especially if they're being counter-initiated against by a melee unit, you can use the Purification Rites. That usually saves the Assault Marines and puts that uh, the, the squad that got knocked down in a pretty bad position. Sentinel right here does have the Stomp, so I'm actually surprised to, not see, to see it not use the Stomp. Um, but it looks like instead he wanted to use the Katachan Devils uh, in that particular situation as his melee counter for whatever reason. I don't know if maybe the Sentinel was already on cooldown and I just missed it. Who knows? You do, because you're watching. Anyway, uh, wow, Red Team with a significant VP lead, 280 to 466. So, uh, and uh, yet Blue Team's the one with the double cap right now, but they must have only recently gotten it. Uh, a med pack dispensed to this heavy weapon team and immediately heals them. However, it took it also took a hit from the grenade launchers, and those grenades go in, do quite a bit of damage, just take out a nice chunk, although it is a slow rate of fire on those grenade launchers. Che likes to use these grenade launchers, and especially to use the move, move, move ability to give his army a lot of mobility, and we've seen so, uh, some, some pretty great things out of him. This is a very awkward flank. Scouts, if they're going to do this, should have already thrown their grenade, and I believe now they can. Um, but yeah, Scouts... Scouts are running around, and I mean, there's not a whole lot sniper scouts are going to be able to do. They're going to lose to the guardsmen in in a ranged fight. Uh, at this point, I think with the commissar, they won't win the melee fight either. So their best chance there was to use the grenade, unfortunately some energy mismanagement from, from Deckard, as well as, well, some mismanagement of that force commander, and he goes down. Force commander uh, just got way out of position there, but a guardsman squad also goes down for a John Soul. Yeah, just kept the garden squad in there a little bit too long. The Assault Marines now in a lot of trouble, probably getting sniped a bit by these Sniper Scouts. So Deckard Kane's Force Commander is way above here, probably not going to get revived anytime soon. Um, not revived by a teammate, that is, unless Che can make a pretty nice push. Che, though, is is not really buying a whole lot. He's, he's emphasized upgrades, and he's going for a rather light build. So... He's not really going to have that much power to push. Meanwhile, back here, we've got a bunker laid down by by John Soul. Of course, a bunker's going bunker to support uh, all your teammates. It supports you. It supports your teammates. We've got a fully upgraded Tech Marine. Uh, just a pure melee build, pretty much. He's got that Axe of the Mechanicum. Pretty powerful. A lot like the... In, almost exactly like um, the Apothecary's anointed power axe. However, I think the axe of the Mechanicum is, does a bit more damage. But otherwise, very similar. Just a, a power melee weapon. It drains energy on hit. Um, and it attacks slowly, so it does pretty good damage per hit. Uh, and he's also got Bionics. Increases his melee damage. Gives him a disruptive ability. And the energy shield. So, Auto Captain Heavy Weapon Team right here. And it looks like we had an incendiary shell down from those artillery spotters. And meanwhile, as you, as I'm sure you've noticed, we've got uh, many new unit portraits. New guardsman portrait, uh, new artillery spotters per portrait, as well as a new heavy weapon team portrait. 
So grenade, the grenade launchers going in from the Lord General, and the Lord General's grenade launchers, they are a bit less powerful than the Heretic grenade launchers, as well as the Stormtrooper grenade launchers. Not going to do quite as much damage, but still pretty nice. Uh, it has, still has the same effect. Anyway, sniper scouts take a shot, one scout model goes down, and now we've got a dreadnought coming out from the killing tree. And let's see, the killing tree we shall make looks like he's getting pushed back a bit. I'm actually surprised. I don't, I don't know how he would be able to really stand up to double sniper scouts without sniper scouts of his own. He doesn't even have detection for these sniper scouts, although he's getting one right now. He's getting a sergeant, that is. Meanwhile, although this autocannon is taking shots, the missile launcher Sentinel is taking shots and winning quite handily at range. You need to be very careful though. It looks like Che is now getting doubled, but we've got Decker Kane into support. Che now needs to move back with the Guardsman. I mean, the Sentinel, maybe he should keep that out, but he wants to keep the Guardsman in to support, um, to support Deckard. As it is, it looks like the, the Sentinel might go down, maybe a sniper hit. Yes, the sniper hit takes out that Sentinel. So a loss for John Soul, losing his Sentinel. Um, and John Soul went in there for the double, but the end, then he ended up finding himself doubled since uh, Lino backed off and I think Che eventually came back in. Meanwhile, back here, we've got a Dreadnought uh, out for uh, out for the killing tree, it has been threatened quite a bit by this missile launcher attack squad from Jimmy Russell's. But look at this apothecary, pretty much can't really... Like, those those attacks aren't going to be able to do a whole lot with the apothecary chasing him down. Especially with the apothecary pretty much just at full health and just managing to stay alive because he'll re restore health with every hit. Uh, even on the bolt pistol shots, he'll restore some health. So only missing an armor warrior, so he still has 600 health. So it's, it's tough to call him tanky at 600 health, but... In a way, he actually kind of is. Um, we actually saw a shotgun blast on the Tactical Marines. Whoa! I think that was, um... That's going to be the end of the Tactical Marines. That was pretty unbelievable. So I think... I don't know. I Because I saw the shotgun blast, and I was about to say it would have been better for him to use um, Old Reliable. That's better on the tree. I don't know whether he used Old Reliable, or maybe it was these assaulted, assaulted Stormtroopers used a grenade. You know, we've got some... Um, Kashigan's, Kashigan's already out for chain. Not only Kashigan's, we've got double Kashigan's as well as a Lehman Russ. And, I mean, he pretty much just rushed to Tier 3. He had his double Guardsman and Sentinel build, got no squads in Tier 2, and he only got a few upgrades. He, he only got the Missile Launcher Sentinel, pretty much. He lost one of his Guardsman squads, though. Meanwhile, over here, we've got uh, the snipers, the scouts that are trying to support, um... The Killing Tree's a Dreadnought. We're getting forced off by the Sniper Scouts from Jimmy Russell's. I, I honestly feel at this point he should probably just get Sniper Scouts of his own. Uh, assault Marines apparently... Well, his Assault Marines were in a totally different lane. He's, he really should have the Assault Marines in his lane, and he ha and he loses the Dreadnought. So the Sniper Scouts... Snipers are a, a, a unit that I feel are like slightly too good. Certainly in pairs, I definitely think they're a bit too good. And... Space Marines are the race that are more vulnerable to snipers than any other race, so I think it really would have been uh, worth worth it for the Killing Tree to get his own snipers. If he's not going to get snipers, he needs to keep his Assault Marines in his lane. Assault Marines, as your command. Going to anyway, Force Commander gets a revive. It needs to retreat out of there really quickly. All of these guys need to retreat out of there really quickly. And as it is, it actually looks like the Lord General goes down, attempting getting the revive. So just traded. Oh, and that looked like it was going to be a heavy turret drop, but um, the Lehman Russ actually took out the heavy turret before it could even be built. A plasma cannon shot goes in. Actually, kind of mostly misses. It gets the knockdown, but didn't do a whole lot of damage. A single plasma cannon shot, if it hits full on, is usually going to take out like 60 to 80 percent of a uh, of a guardsman spot's health. It's, it's such a powerful weapon. But Killing Tree is just really, really at the mercy of these Sniper Scouts. They are... Yeah, we've got level 2 Sniper Scouts. Meanwhile, we've got some Assault Marines jumping in, but it looks like they've been stunned. They're getting hit a lot. Uh, knocked down by Catachan Devils, and they should just retreat out of there. Uh, stop pressing their luck. Stop jumping into fights that they are not going to win. I think they might be lucky to get out of... No, they lost one model. I, I thought they just might not lose a model. Catachan Devils take a hit from the uh, dreadnought, but it actually appeared like they mostly missed. Uh, I think the first hit from the dreadnought, from the from the assault barrage, assault cannon barrage, 
knock them over, and then push them out of the way so that the second one didn't really hit full on. But yeah, double Kashkins for Che. The Kashkins are an absurdly powerful unit. Just, just a little too good, these Kashkins. Meanwhile, we've got Sniper Scouts uh, attempting to take the Imperial Guard Bunker, and not only they do not only, only attempt, they actually manage to take it, but wow, they are getting absolutely murdered because we have double Sniper Scouts. Sn sniper Scouts do count as anti-garrison. Uh, will this Sniper Scout go down? This is Deckard's single Sniper Scout. Does he even make the attempt? Meanwhile, Katachan Devil's in a lot of trouble. Get out of there with one hit point. Lucky Katachan Devil's getting out alive with one hit point. Melta Stormtroopers getting hit a lot as well. Those Stormtroopers look kind of funny uh, with that with that particular uh, custom scheme for the Imperial Guard. Meanwhile, over here, I imagine we still have the Heavy Weapon Team taking some shots. We've also got a Plasma Cannon Devastator. Must have scared off the Lord General. Attempting to cap. But the Blue Team now with a massive deficit. Oh my god, where did that deficit come from? 99 to 434. But blue team about to take the double cap, so that will start the VPs ticking in their favor. They've got a lot of ground to make up. And uh, Che just kind of sitting here. He's getting another Lehman Rossi. He's already got one, which he got with the global, so he didn't have to spend any power whatsoever on this Lehman Rust, which is which is a very, very powerful thing, uh, considering a tank is usually pretty expensive on red. I mean, most of the other call-ins in the game, um, either you're spending, you're still spending power, like for a Terminator call-in, or it's it's some kind of like tier two level unit, like warp spiders or stormtroopers or a bane wolf. So it's not gonna, it it wouldn't cost. Um, it wouldn't cost 125 power, which is how much a Lehman Rust costs in terms of power. Anyway, we've got a Plasma Cannon Devastator trying to take shots, I think, on the bunker. Took one shot, hit like a, a lamp pole or something, or a banner pole. So, an, And unfortunately, those shots are missing, hitting terrain. Meanwhile, back over here, the Imperial Guard engagement is where it's at. Artillery spotters just might go down one hit point, and the artillery spotters get out of there as well. We've seen a lot of really close calls. How about these Guardsmen at 20 hit points? Another close call. And we've got some Kashkins for Lino actually getting absolutely murdered by the Executioner Cannon on this Lehman Rust. Lehman Rust needs to be careful though, not get, not expose itself too much to the Heavy Weapon Team. It's just, it seems like it's just barely in the firing arc. But there we go with a Devastator down. I think for, yeah, Deckard lost a, a Devastator squad. Probably didn't even see it happening. And now we've got Terminators for, uh, for Jimmy Russell. He's, he's preserved a lot of his stuff and now he's got Terminators out on the field. Unfortunately, although the Apothecary can definitely restore a lot of health with the Chang Changwin Saints, Changwin Chain, Sanguin Chain Sword. Oh my God! Um, wow, he actually managed to not die. In oh, just kidding, he died. But yeah, the uh, Terminators in melee are definitely going to do enough melee damage to um, out, basically just out damage the health regeneration of the Apothecary using the Sanguin Chain Sword. My god, that is a mouthful. Say that five times fast. And the bunker goes down from another plasma cannon shot. Managed to find a better angle, I assume. So the bunker goes down. Um, I think Deckard being really, really, really smart right here. Uh, looks like all blue team heroes have been revived by Laramin's Blessing. This is now a terrible position for this Lehman Rust. This is the regular battle cannon Lehman Rust. It might even be 100% snared. Uh, since it's snared by the Laz Cannon, also hit by a Melt of Arm from the Stormtroopers, and that's also just way too much damage to follow up. So there was no way that Lehman Rust was getting out of there. It was just... It was just totally screwed. Meanwhile, Sniper Scouts are going to open fire on the Terminators, I imagine? Maybe they are out of range of the Terminators. Alright, one, one shot goes in. Sniper Scouts, not a terrible choice against uh, Terminators. They do fire rather slowly, so definitely not the best, but they will do full damage. Sniper sniper weapons will do full damage against super heavy infantry on it. Anyway, a new bunker out for the red team, and I mean, I'm sure they can just keep putting them down. Che is low on resources, but he's got Kashkins running out. Uh, it looks like they have, yeah, the, the incoming ability from the flak jacket. That actually reduces the damage they take. 
Deckard throwing in some scouts. Uh, they And they're throwing in a grenade. That grenade doesn't do much, but there's a Pergatus from the Inquisitor from John Soul. Such a powerful ability, especially powerful in teams. Assault Marines go down for Deckard. Wow, how did they go down? And oh, he's going to lose the Plasma Cannon Devastator as well. My god, there's just too much range fire here. We've got um, Castricans, although they do have Melted Guns. We've got Double Plasma Guardsmen as well as some Assault Kit Stormtrooper. So a lot of range fire coming out of Lino. Looks like Che may be about to answer back with his double Kashikans, but they might be walking through a smoke shell. Alright, meanwhile, Killing Tree is holding his side, which is a little surprising. I guess looking over here explains it. Basically, just Jimmy Russells has actually moved out of his lane to help out his teammates, um, but that means he's not holding his lane. The Reds team still has the double cap and the VP lead, though, so they may be doing just fine. And wow, Killing Tree just loses track of his micro uh, and loses one of his scouts to the range fire of the tax as well as the Terminators. We've got a hard commitment. It looks like, yeah, John Soul now committing over to this lane. But that does open things up for Deckard to get a decap on the middle VP with his scouts. And the red team has not yet get, gotten a decap off on this VP right here. So despite them having more units, they're still not ticking down VPs. Soon these Kashkins, Kashkins I think are in a nice position around the building, keeping them not exposed from most of the units around. And they are just such a powerful unit, also buffed by the Lord General, so they won't take a whole lot of damage. We've got tanks running around. Stormtroopers nearly go down at 44 hit points. Well, let's see what kind of tanks we got. We've got, well, that's not really a tank. But we've got this Lehman Russ. I thought I heard uh, like a Predator shot, but I must have been hearing things. Although the thing I thought I heard was a Predator shot. Anyway, Vanguard veterans actually targeting the, the Librarian. They could even go for, uh, for the Terminators, and they would do a lot of damage to the Terminators. But I think he might... He may have wanted to try to count on, like, seeing if he could actually get a wipe on, uh, a wipe on the librarian entirely. Meanwhile, oh, I missed an orbital, really? And a squad goes down for, it looked like, maybe that was Lino? Yeah, one squad went down. Here we're going to have another creeping barrage, just knocking units off the point. And it looks like, wow, I'd be surprised. Oh, heavy weapons team. I thought it was going to, I thought it was going to die just from all the range fire that was here. But as soon as it came out, it actually got reinforced by the bunker. So it was fine. Uh, last cannon devastator needs to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Lucky to not lose a model though. Anyway, blue team now taking the middle VP. So that'll give them double cap for a little bit. Uh, I don't know why the red team not not getting the cap back on this VP right here when that oh and here we go with a rocket run missing nukes by looking at VPs but attack I did catch that tax squad getting wiped right there so one tax squad down for yeah Jimmy Russell lost his missile tax squad did have a sergeant I believe and probably had a few levels plasma cannon shot going in these Catachandels in huge pain despite not losing any models one more shot gonna go in and takes out the bunker again so another bunker down very nice to have a something like a plasma cannon devastator as an anti-bunker tool. Meanwhile, we've got another bunker over here. This one is... Who does this belong to exactly? I mean, it belongs to the red team, but I wanted to check the player, and it doesn't say. Anyway. We've got a Lehman Rust now going in. That heavy weapon team is going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it needs to retreat out of there. One of the Lehman Rusts has been judged. So if the Inquisitor is still around... Ooh, this is now a little bit tricky. But the... the wow, the, the bunker is actually in a huge amount of trouble. The Laz Cannon inside might die. I think the Laz Cannon... The Laz Cannon reinforced and managed to get out of there alive. But it did go down. Oh, but so did one of the Lehman Rusts. Because we had the Laz Cannon from John Soul setting up right here. Looks like we've got Laz Cannons from a lot of people, and this looks like a Yeah, that was a Lehman Rush call in, and here's another Fregatus stunning the Terminators, doing damage all around, and we have the Bane Blade as well as the Bane Blade call out, since the Bane Blade is such a great 3v3 unit, and it, it takes quite a commitment to finish off a Bane Blade.
So some recent changes to the Bane Blade. There were some recent changes, and I'm kind of going off memory here, but I believe the heavy bolters on the sides, as well as probably the heavy bolter on the front as well, were actually buffed, while I think maybe the main cannon was nerfed. Pretty sure the, the heavy bolters were buffed off. All right. We've got a Lazcan Predator right here. Took out took out quite a chunk out of uh, out of the, the Land Raider self. Let's see if it can take another shot, but it seems to be targeting other things, so it doesn't shoot the Land Raider anymore. Meanwhile, it looked like the Tech Lane did a little force melee on the Land Raider Redeemer. Tech Marine taking shots, though. Oh, because he he had the axe, but then he switched to the Melted Gun. So we've got a lot of AV now against this Land Raider Redeemer, and to be honest, not a whole lot against the Predator. Most of the potential AV against the Predator is going to be melee AV, so the Predator can always just micro away from that. Meanwhile, a Whirlwind Artillery Tank completely fails to uh, disrupt and knock over these Stormtroopers. So Stormtroopers man get, managed to get the decap, and now the VPs are suddenly very, very even. 72 to 94. Stormtroopers nearly dying, as well as a Force Commander getting hit by a Laz Cannon. The Bane Blade now in the middle uh, does get snared, I think, by some Melta Stormtroopers, maybe? I didn't even see what snared it. But here's a Pregatus again, stunning some more of these squads. And right now it's kind of a fight and a stalemate over the middle. Both the red team, the red team has the right side, the blue team has the left. Red team and now getting the middle, but how long can that Inquisitor stay alive? Might be able to use Inquisitorial Mandate. And it looks like she used Inquisitorial Mandate just to run out of there. I think she should run out of there and retreat since she's not going to achieve much else there. She's just kind of running in weird places. And uh, Inquisitor goes down, not actually terribly surprisingly. They played now in uh, a little bit of trouble, I think. It, yeah, I mean, more than I think. It's in trouble. It needs support. It's now getting chased by uh, Vanguard veterans as well as Terminators. They are taking damage, but, I mean, a bigger loss to lose an entire Bane Blade than to use a Terminator or a Vanguard model. Now getting the repairs, the Vanguards as well as the Terminators just trying to melee right through it. Can they do it? There's also a, not a heavy turret. That's a Vanquisher Lehman Russ, and this Bane Blade it goes down from the Vanquisher Lehman Russ. Vanquisher Lehman Russ out of Che. Good call getting that Vanquisher. Was able to shoot from pretty long range as well as do some extra damage. So, wow, that Bane Blade did not last long. Whoa, and it looks like uh, two rather expensive models got gives right there. Possibly like, I don't know, Vanguard or Attack or. Oh, it must have been these. These. Yeah, it was a Van. Those were Vanguards. I mean, plus 22. Right, it's, it's gonna be something expensive. Anyway, a Force Commander right here. I don't know what he's doing, but he's going to attack the Tech Marine. The Tech Marine actually going to be in a bit of trouble if he's getting hit by the Force Commander. Since the Force Commander will do a lot of damage in a single hit. You know, this Space Marine Predator needs to be very, very careful. It has its rear armor facing forward. It's only got an auto cannon and does not have the extra armor, so it will lose quite handily to the Predator from Jimmy Russell's. So he needs to be very careful with the way he uses that Predator. Well, we've got uh, auto cannon for yeah for for Lino inside this building. Actually taking shots, and I mean it does have pretty long range. Is the Land Raider now in trouble? It did get hit by a snare by the stormtroopers, but it looks like the stormtroopers are just uh, running in, getting the melta, and then not achieving much else. And uh, did those sniper scouts manage to get inside? Wow, it actually looks like. Um, yeah, the killing tree did not get hit that hard by uh, by the rocket run because the, the most of the units just got inside the rocket run. I mean, got inside the land raider, and then the rocket run is not that powerful of a nuke against vehicles. Meanwhile, we've got an orbital bombardment. Oh no! Why did he take the the vanguards out? So the vanguards got out. They're going to get hit by the orbital, and the land raider not moving. It's going to go down. Here's another Pregatus from the Inquisitor against such a powerful team's ability. Takes out another Vanguard model. And those Vanguards, they've bled a lot. Killing Tree bleeding a lot, hurting a lot. Blue team now in a little bit of trouble with the red team taking the middle VP. 
However, it does look like Deckard Kane has come to the rescue, so he will at least get a decap off on this middle VP. Buy them some time. Inquisitor actually using the Inquisitorial Mandate just for the purpose of reviving the team. Uh, can certainly work, in, and in situations where you otherwise would not be able to revive your teammate. Anyway, I don't know if this Force Commander is going to be... Yeah, he's not going to be able to take out that Lehman Rush. Too much fire support. There is a Rocket Run. Oh my god, look at how powerful the Rocket Run is against other Imperial Guard squads. Unfortunately, not a well-placed Rocket Run. That should have been the wipe on both of those Guardsmen spots, and yet now both of them walk away. Certainly lost a lot of models, but... It's not actually going to be that much bleed. I mean, if we look at the cost right here, it's... Like, it might be the cost of about two TAC models. Not even, like, one and a half. Uh, one and a half TAC models. Is that going to be... That's going to be a creeping barrage. Meanwhile, back here, scouts are... Well, getting killed. Or not. They actually aren't getting killed. Inquisitor using her thing, although she should detonate it right on top of the squads, since that will actually do more damage. Oh, I didn't realize that was the end of the game. And a red team takes it. They do take it in the end, they did have that early lead, but then the blue team brought it back a little bit. But red team still clutching it out in the end. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.